It's been said that our lives are built one memory at a time. No experience ever really gone as long as we remember. But at the center of this story is a memory that was lost. Here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, in 2008, life for 17-year-old Brittany Marcel was as carefree as the sky over the city's annual hot air balloon fiesta. She lived in this house with her single mother, Diane, one of seven siblings. Tell me what life was like 2008 in your house in Albuquerque. I had, at that time, five kids living with me. Two were on their own, and uh, it was joyful, a beautiful family, and a lovely life, and I couldn't have asked for anything better. Brittany felt right in the middle of her boisterous family, number five of seven. Kathleen Gwynn and Alicia Marcel are two of her older sisters. She had a great personality. She would talk to anyone very outgoing. Everyone knew her for her positivity. I know it's like a cliche to say, but she was going places. She had um, dreams and goals, and she was taking care of them. One of those dreams, to be a television reporter. But for now, the high school senior held down a more modest job at the local mall. She worked at a sunglass icon. She could sell a pair of glasses and talk somebody into buying three or four more. The mall was just down the road from where the Marcel family lived on the west side of Albuquerque, a cozy swath of suburbs just off the Rio Grande. Our neighborhood was perfect. It was nice. Nothing happened like that. Which made what did happen here on September 11th, 2008, so unfathomable. It was a Thursday, and Brittany would be out of school early. She said, do you want to meet for lunch? I said, sure. Where do you want to go? And she said, let's just meet at home. OK, fine. And you called her as you were driving home? I did. There was no fear in her voice, nothing. Everything was normal. Minutes later, Diane pulls into her driveway and walks into a terrifying scene. I unlock the door, and I see this guy with a shovel. And she's over here to the left at the bottom of the stairway bleeding, and I thought, really, she was dead. Diane can't believe her eyes. Her daughter lying on the floor, beaten and bloodied. Her purse, shoes, DVDs are scattered just inside the door, dropped as she was hit on the head by a man wielding a shovel. But the assailant was right there, standing over He was right there, and he looked at me, and he just And you made walked. eye contact. Right. He turned around, and he, he had the shovel in his hand still. This guy takes off, and he heads to the kitchen, and he looked at me as he reached for the biggest butcher knife out of the knife block on the counter. And he said, you're next. Diane runs frantically from the house, screaming. A neighbor on the street comes to her aid as she dials 911. What is your name? Diane Marcel. I said, my daughter's been beaten, and the guy's probably still in there. I'm afraid that he might be in there. Oh, my gosh. This is a life death situation. Can they hurry? Even before police arrive and unaware the attacker has escaped, Diane is running back into the house with that neighbor, desperate to save Brittany's life. Can you come with me, please? I'm so afraid. The entire course of your life changed in seven minutes. It changed everything. Is your daughter breathing right now? She's breathing but moaning. She's going to lose consciousness. Please, there's blood everywhere. Her face was already swelling. Her head was swollen already from the beating. Her arms were bruised, and she was moaning. We had a homicide call out. There was an individual on the west side that was attacked inside of their house. Jason Morales was a detective on the case. He's since retired from the Albuquerque Police Department. So myself and the other homicide detectives responded to the scene. Brittany is whisked away in an ambulance. Knowing how unreliable eyewitness accounts can become over time, detectives want to speak to Diane immediately. What did they ask you specifically? They asked what, you know, what he looked like, and I told them he's either a dark Caucasian or a light Hispanic. I said he's probably 5'7", or, you know, 5'11", in that, in that range, probably in his 20s. It was somebody that she had never seen before, somebody she did not recognize. Is the image of seeing this man seared into your memory? It is. It is. Investigators assessed the scene, trying to determine what actually happened. The entire house had not been touched, so we kind of ruled the burglary out right away. It seemed like it was more personal. Detective Morales collects the weapons left behind by the attacker. He had the shovel that he was holding when Diane walked in. There was also duct tape at the scene, and then the knife. And there was something else that attacker left behind. 
He needed to get out of that house right away. The suspect actually went through a large living room window instead of exiting out of the sliding glass door. He cut himself, leaving his blood. One perfectly round drop of blood. A calling card inadvertently left behind by whoever did this. They had his DNA. Now all police needed to do was find the guy. As Diane rushes to the hospital, the rest of the family gets word. When we saw her, um, we realized how very, very bad it was. There was severe brain, brain trauma. They said that she did try to fight him off because she had severe bruising on each arm at the upper part. Her left wrist was broken, her jaw was broken. And when we finally went there, just like, just like drop. Like, this is Brittany, no. Her head was, it was like a huge balloon. Um, face swollen, bruised, battered. I had that, that terrible feeling because when the detective came, he said he was a homicide detective. And I was like, no one thinks she's going to make it. That detective needs Diane's help again. Now we need to go down the station, make a sketch. The quicker we get it out, the quicker we can publicize it. This is the man police want to talk to in connection with a vicious beating. As police start fielding tips, Brittany's family can only pray she will somehow pull through. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.